Welcome to a new episode of the Film Rescue Show. I am your pitch master general, as always, Seth, and I am joined by, as always, my favorite hosts in the world. I have Jesse Fresco, the professional cynic. Hello, I'm here, and for this final episode of Film Rescue, I am properly stopped. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Oh, man, this is a real... I, I thought this would be an easy one to go out on. After rewatching. I'm like, oh, this is going to be rough. This is going to be bad. You fucked up, bro. You uh, fucked up. Uh, <laughs> And that is our horror, horror, Hope. Hope, thank you for jumping on this to break down the horror of this movie with us. Hey, I have a terrifier glass. I am currently drinking my uh, my poison out of, so. Your <laughs> horror as, juice. As, or as my um, roommate always threatens, he's like, I'm going to make you a cocktail of formalin and decal. So, you know. <laughs> That's funny. It makes wow. sense for Hope's job, y'all. It makes yeah. sense for Hope's yeah, job. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, <laughs> let's let's hold off talking about this movie for a second. I want to hear what are you guys watching? What have you been into lately, Jesse? Before we actually, we've already started recording. If if you were looking at this unedited, you would already know what Jesse's been watching lately. We've been the watching bo- the yeah. boys. The boys has started back up again. It's it was a long wait between season three and four. They had a big break. Um, well, they also were finished filming and editing, but they waited out of respect for the writer strike. Yeah. And that's why it was pushed. And they yeah. always. Because the, the boys is based always, as fuck. Yeah. And the boys has always been a summer release. So they just said, fuck it. We'll wait till the summer. Yeah. yeah. And so. Gen V did fill in the gap between. Um, I, still haven't wa- I still haven't watched Gen V. I've heard it's just as good, uh, but it's its own thing. Um, did you watch any of Diabolical? Oh, no, God, I, have, I love I, Diabolical. I have not watched I it. I've heard it's very good. Diabolical. I've heard it's very good. I have not watched it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Diabolical is yeah, excellent. This new season of The Boys is, I'm only up to episode two. There's three episodes out right now. It is firing on all, all cylinders. They, they're trying to piss off literally everyone. Uh, everybody. And that's the beauty of it. I was, I, I clocked um, uh, Sage, the the new character for this season. I had clocked mm. her as like a Candace Owens type. And to find out that's not the way they're going with no. her. I'm oh, no. so curious for where they're going for the end of this season. She feels um, like every um, uh, centrist black person that votes, but always votes Republican because they feel like they can get something out of it. She's highly, I, highly manipulative. And you haven't even seen what she does in season, in episode three yet either. Mm, um, I was, yeah, I think that's a new I, character. I don't remember that it, character. Hold on. I've I've seen the first episode. Jesse's seen the first two, and Seth, you've seen the first three. Yeah. Oh, we're staggered. We're so staggered. We're all staggered. Yeah, That's we're a all perfect staggered. stack. I love it. Um, yeah. yeah. No. Episode three goes a little crazy, especially in the last like couple minutes. You know how they always like crank it in the last like ten minutes to give you something to think oh, about. Yeah. We got to get story. the really good shock value into these shows now. <laughs> Whoo, yeah. man! Um, yeah. I wasn't expecting the deep to be such a big character this season. I thought we were going to phase him out, but he's uh. He's getting some limelight now. Well, 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 apparently this is his last season. Chance Crawford's not signed off or anything after season four. So I'm oh, guessing okay. either, he's either leaving the show, like they're writing him out or they're killing him off one or the other. I, Considering the fact that he's always in the room with Homelander and what he he's asked to do in episode one, I would not be yeah. surprised if Homelander just like punches gonna, his head I wasn't going to do it, guys. I wasn't going to do it. So, Listen, so we had, reality is just a spectrum, guys. We had to get an ode to Challenger somewhere, right? <laughs> Okay. The the fact that when he's asked to do that and Ashley's just watching it like like she's into it and like, oh my god, oh, yeah. that's so, the best. That's so the best. I was sitting there watching with Jacob and he looks over at me and he's like, mm-hmm. That's your fucking face right now. Yeah. And I was like, Don't ruin my fun. Yeah. <laughs> I was watching. Well, I was like, "Yeah, this is what Hope's into." I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm fucking right. I'm into that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hope, what have you been watching lately? Are you are you watching The Acolyte? So I, I, I with The Acolyte, I'm gonna just kind of binge that. I think once it's oh, all sure. out, fair, fair. Um, but re- honestly, lately I've been kind. Of, other than for like our shows, I've been stepping away from TV. Kind of fair. what I've been doing is. Um, I've been taking on the impossible task and by the impossible task, I mean, reading all of one piece. That's right. Oh That's yeah. Right. Um, How far in? <laughs> so, so let me break this down for you guys. Um, currently one piece is at like 1,120 chapters or something. Mm-hmm. 
when I visited you guys about a month ago, I had like just started. Like I started on the plane. Yeah, yeah. There. I am currently on chapter 455. There you go. Nice. So I'm clipping damn through. Ne- I'm damn near halfway. And um, like I, uh, the, the funny thing is like, I hate being that like hipster. Like I was reading this before you fucking were into it. Da, 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 da. But like, I legit was like, I read one piece like 15 something years ago, like when it was first coming out. Wow. And then like, I stepped back. And it just, I was like, okay, okay, I'm gonna get back into it now since actually anime is cool again. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can call it like a point of pride being like, it's like when uh, the prequel Star Wars came out and all the kids loved Jar Jar and all that crap, and all the old fans were like, you know, it's like it's like a bit in space where Simon Pegg goes off on the kid in the comic book store. You don't yeah. know how important it was, how much it meant to us. I'll take your fifty pence and get out. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like it, it's that, that, but it's you know, I you know, it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's like no, like I I was never ashamed of it. It was more so the fact of like during that when I when I fell off, it was that awkward period of I'm too poor to buy manga mm. and they just shut down all the free manga sites. Mm, yeah. And I don't like to watch the anime so much. I like to read it. That's my that's my thing. I like to read the manga. Yeah. So like once my free sites went down, I was like, well, fuck. Mm. <laughs> but now like you know, um, Sh- Sh- Shonen Jump app, not a sponsor, but please be one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, dude, it's just like two bucks a month and I yeah. get all the fucking manga I want. So I was like, OK, yeah, I, I'm I'm poor, but I'm not that poor where I can't afford two bucks a month. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And, and for all that content. Right. It's like, oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I Honestly, for one piece, I'd pay two bucks a month for one piece. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. What about you, well, Seth? Are you, are you watching the acolyte? I am watching the acolyte. I'm I'm digging the acolyte. Um, it's it's all the weird shit, and the Jedi are bad cops, and I love that. That like like a- a- anything I could ask for out of Star Wars, it's giving it to me. So I'm I'm here for it. Gotcha. Um, I I'm I will say, I did see the first episode, and I'm sorry. They fucking fucked over Carrie and Moss. Just that's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, she's like there for like maybe like ten minutes. She's gone. <laughs> well, it, she's murdered in the opening scene. Spoilers for everybody. Why would you? What is the point? Because like, it's a flashback show. It's a, it. It. She's we're we're and it's also fitting that they're using Carrie Ann Moss when she was in Memento, and we're getting to see her murder uncovered backwards. It. These are talented filmmakers. Like they really do know what they're doing. Okay. Uh, that that's again. I'm I watched the first episode and I'm just gonna wait till the rest comes out to binge it. Fair. I did see that first episode and I'm like, while it was great, my girl got fucked over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We 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 get her back by episode three. Um, and I have theories that we. <laughs> they may they may undo the murder <laughs> by the end of it. Oh God! I have it's, theories. It's space wizards. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that hey, for, I, four switch lesbians made twins. Uh, another didact out of the like hell yeah. It, the moment where magic. all the all the fanboys flipped out like oh my god the two women conceived a child like who cares Whatever. with magic. Yeah, Seth. By the way, your audio gain is really high right now. My gain's at, really high. Look at your just, waveform. Look at your waveform, dude. You're spiking. D- look at your waveform. So do you? Yeah, my you're word. all the way to the top, homie. You always. Yeah, but I'm spike. not like but I'm not like constantly at the top. Yes, you like damn near. That's weird. I, I think it'll be fine. If, if it doesn't sound like I'm clipping, it should be fine. Okay. All right. Well, never mind. Whatever you're <laughs> hearing is what it's recording. Oh, okay. All right. I'll, yeah. I'll fix it in editing. I'll fix it in post. <laughs> Speaking Anywho, of fixing it in post, so, have we pushed off so, from the movie far so, enough? Hold on. Hold on. First off. Oh, push uh, off further. Yes, please. Thank you. Yes. On brand. We don't want to talk about the movie. <laughs> Legion J. He's in the acolyte. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! So good. Um, you like he's he's bringing a like softness to the Jedi that we've not seen before. I think Yoda is intentionally obtuse, and so he's giving us like, what if Qui Gon Jinn was Yoda? And oh, I love him. 
I I adore that man. I I am so excited that he's breaking into more like America. Like he learned English just for this. He like learned it in like three months. Wow. Hmm. J- I mean, it's not perfect English, but like goddamn, sure. like learning any English in three months, like yeah, yeah, he yeah. Was- he was like, he's like Star Wars. Yeah, I'm gonna learn. Absolutely. <laughs> so and all I can think about is Mark Hamill talking different. about how unreadable Star Wars lines can be too. Oh, yeah. So that's a yeah. thankless <laughs> job to learn English to do these like difficult to read lines. Yeah, yeah. it's like I mean, uh, I, Chris Lambert in Highlander. So he, it's like Chris Lambert in Highlander where he didn't actually speak English. He always he spoke French, so he had to learn his mm-hmm. lines. He had to learn his lines phonetically. Yeah, and so he just yeah. he was saying words, but didn't know what they meant. So uh, that's why his performance in that first Highlander is a little off, stilted. Yeah, mm-hmm. stilted, strange delivery. He, the accent goes up on the wrong words. Like this because he doesn't speak English at the time. Mm-hmm. Now he's mm-hmm. now he speaks English just fine. Right. Our our Squid Game boy though he did it in three months. That's wild. Yeah, well, is it Squid Game I'm... season two supposed to come out this year? Yeah, I think so. Nice. It is. Yes, I've been missing. I that. love that man so much, and the fact like, I was like my my Korean boys. He's making headway. So, so like, so many people are into like K dramas and stuff, but yeah. like, you don't see so many like Koreans breaking into like American Hollywood. So I was like, yeah. my Korean baby, mm-hmm. <laughs> he's making waves. I love it. I love it. Well, that's what we've been watching uh, outside of what we watched for this episode. Let's finally introduce our movie. You already know uh, from the title, uh, but uh, we are talking about Superman 5, the quest for more money. Um, <laughs> Superman are, you double, are you double fisting or are you? I can double fist, but I'm not going to do it in front of my computer where I could break it. So. Well, yeah. And, and also the boys is doing more than enough of that for us anyways. Who directed this movie, Seth? This direct this film is directed by an abuser. Uh, cold hard text straight out the front. Brian yeah. Singer mm-hmm. is a uh, as we've learned, rapist, great, child molester, all not a great things. human being. Um, also, person. also starring an abuser uh, as our antagonist. I not Brandon for, Ralph. He's the only one that escapes unscathed. <laughs> I love Brandon. I said, I, I said as our antagonist. I, I was, okay. To be Good. clear. You scared uh, me for a second. I was like, I love Brandon, my baby. Yeah, this... Um, why the fuck is this on the slate? Hey, why are we talking about this? Last episode of Film Rescue ongoing. No more cape shit. <laughs> <laughs> last one. This is... I, I, I thought about I this I think one. this is because we didn't do Tenet. So this is our tenant might return and like okay let's let's clarify this now like this is the last ongoing episode of Film Rescue. We're not going to do seasons after this because I'm sick of watching garbage. <laughs> Everybody's sick of it and it's killing our schedules. Um go 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 to our Patreon and give us yes. a buck a month and then you can tell us what to watch on Film Rescue. And that yes. is the only way Film Rescue comes back is on the fucking Patreon. We have guaranteed two episodes for Patreon coming up at some point, but not anytime soon. This is going to take a break after this episode guaranteed wraps up. by Jesse cuz I would rather <laughs> laser my eyes out but one of them is know. six hours long and the other one is madam webb <laughs> so six oops. six hours right now six hours right now shut the fuck up <laughs> <laughs> we may still get a third one you shut the hell up <gasps> anyways so yeah uh the reason I this is on here is be- <laughs> it's because yeah i'm gonna take another sip right now so anyways <laughs> it's here because this isn't despite all the people involved in this this isn't the worst movie ever made. This isn't true. the worst no, Superman movie ever not. made. Also true. But I would argue... Damn near, but no. I w- but it's. I thought it was interesting because it's, it's indicative of being a reaction to the Donner stuff and also indicative of a reaction to the canceled Tim Burton movie from the 1990s. If you want to know mm. more about that, go watch the, the documentary. Cage shit. The shit. The documentary, The Death of Superman Lives, is on YouTube right now. It's on there for free. Somebody uploaded it. It's never been taken down. It actually looked interesting. I don't know if it would have been a good movie, but it looked interesting. If you're curious why Nick Cage was at the end of the Flash movie for no goddamn reason, That's this why. is the reason. That's why. And that is, this film was a reaction to all of that. 
like let's ignore all the weird stuff and just make it as bland, safe. Bl- they 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 went with Kevin possible. Smith and went the opposite direction of Kevin Smith and yes, Cage. Yes, it's as far in the opposite direction, and then you get to the film after this, which is Man of Steel, which is also a reaction to this. Mm-hmm. So every every single film post Donner has been a reaction to the previous one. The only one I'm hopeful for is James Gunn's because it's apparently a completely new thing. Totally our new. Our savior. No, our savior. Yeah, not James Gunn. Our savior. I have the only the only thing I think they're pulling from is the is the John Williams Superman theme. That's it. Everything else, new stuff, new design, new style, everything. Which, like, how how much is that a testament to John Williams' skill that we cannot lose that as our Superman theme? Oh, because John Williams is the man. No, like, like I, it, it's it's so strong that they tried to make a new one for Man of Steel. And we've still seen Henry Cavill with the John Williams theme in this universe. Like, yeah, it's like it, actually, I said this. That, I said this that's before. a strong arm. I said this no, years ago. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, so if you go on YouTube right now and look up John Williams is the man, there's a guy who made like a video. Uh, it 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 was supposed to be like hype for the new Star Wars, which was um at the time episode. I want to say it's an old video. It's an old video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he makes this song, but he does it in every single John Williams format. So he did it like he did Jaws, he did Superman, he did Indiana Jones. Like he did it all the like all the themes, but he's singing the Star Wars song with it. So good, such a great testament to John Williams. Look it up; it's fantastic. I think I've seen that before. I I know. I think I know the video you're speaking of. It is excellent, and like it's crazy. It's how an old, old is... video, so yeah, it, it's been circulating. Yeah, but... yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like, it's crazy how all of his themes stack on each other so well. Too, yes. like ET. I remember ET being in that one. Uh, um, yes, it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love John Williams. He yeah. didn't score this, but they definitely used his stuff. It's uh Oh yeah, they did. <laughs> yeah, it was um John Ottman was who was also weirdly the editor of the movie. <laughs> he's the he's the composer for the music and also is the well, editor. Weird. That that makes that makes sense. Like I know in post production editing my, to music, editing to temp tracks. Yeah, like, yeah. If if my editor knew how to compose, or if my composer knew how to edit, that process would be even more seamless. So like yeah. it, it makes sense to have that crossover. Yeah, and, and I, going back to the theme, I said years ago, like imagine trying to rewrite the Star Spangled Banner and don't use any of the original motifs. Yeah. You can't like this. This is the Superman theme. That's yeah. what it is. It's set in stone. Like you can't change it. Like you, you just, I, I appreciate the audacity of Snyder to try to change it, but he failed like nice for his universe. And that's now dead. Snyder, get, Snyder throws, let it go. Just please move on. <laughs> it's getting annoying. Why don't you move on, Jesse? Why don't you move on? Hey, I'm not the one. Jeremy from defending your movie is the one that starts the fights. I just let it go at this point. <laughs> He go, he. I think he enjoys that. I think he's one he of those guys that it. like he really he goes, gets off on it. He goes down to the bar and he's like, "Hey, who wants to fight?" <laughs> you know what I mean? He's it's that like, guy. It's like fucking Hemingway showing up drunk. All right, who wants to fight? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love Jeremy. Um, Jeremy would have had fun on this episode. I bet. Well, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna invite him if we do Rebel Moon for uh for Film Rescue Patreon. He's he's invited. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. So so let's let's break down let's break down our our histories with this film. Um, so to start us off, I saw this in theaters when it came out. Same. Um, I was this was like high school uh, for me. Like I was young. I was definitely like teenager when this came out. College for me. I think it was right before I went to Towson. And this is a this is a testament to my ongoing grudge against this movie. I remember walking out of the theater as a teenager going, that movie felt too long. And that was the first time I had ever felt that at a movie. I love like <clears throat> movie runtimes did not matter to me. I would do like all three Lord of the Rings back to back as they would come to theaters no. just to but like that's Lord of the Rings. <laughs> but still right. like the, I'm not Roger I'm not Ebert, feeling Roger, the sit. Roger Ebert said it best. No good movie is too long. No bad film is short enough. Yeah. Ex- and this was That's the first one I remember walking out of the theater, like having felt the time. I was like, oh, yeah. it feels like the day has passed. And like, I just had to yeah. sit through so much. Um, Hope, when did you see this first? Was this uh, a watch for the I... podcast? 
I did not um, watch it in theaters, but I had seen it before the podcast. Mm. Um, it had been, it's been years, mind you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, I remember because in the, well, this came out two thousand five, right? Two thousand six. Mm-hmm. Two thousand six. Uh, around that time, I was. Uh, <laughs> we're not going to get into my past. Around that time, I was very. Sh- I was uh, very limited to. The outside world. Yeah. We'll just leave it at that. Um, so I had to wait a couple years later to experience anything. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I had watched it like later, later on. But it, and even then I was just kind of like, eh, you know, I was more I've always been more of a Marvel head. Mm. I was definitely mm-hmm. way more into like. Uh, the the first original three X Men movies; those are still like my go to yeah. like superhero movies of that time. Um, Which is why Brian Singer's even here in the first place, <laughs> right? It's unfortunate um, that the superhero genre owes a lot to him. It's really unfortunate. <laughs> but also, I I think I had just watched the very the first Iron Man came out in 07. and I know I had seen that before I saw this Superman, mm. at least this Superman. So I was just like, Iron Man was oh eight. You want to clarify? Oh wait, around that time. Yeah, yeah. You know, I remember seeing um, it while I was at Towson University, and there was a theater literally a block away from my door. I, I just nice. remember I was like a senior in high school when I was, because yeah. that's when I got my car. Um, yeah, and I was, I could escape things, so uh, that's when I saw a lot more movies. And I remember seeing Iron, the first Iron Man, and I was like, and then I, afterwards I saw this Superman. I was like, that was a piece of shit. <laughs> Give me more Iron Man. <laughs> Give me more Iron Man. <laughs> Yeah. So. You know why it feels long? It's it is. boring! Speaking of peaking. Oh, um, can, 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 Seth, can you tell the listeners what you told us in our Discord? Because I'm still laughing over that comment. Yeah. Oh, th- this ended up being my letterboxed review. Um, <laughs> of course it did. Yes! Oh. Uh, actually, let, let me scroll. I want to get my wording right because I know I, I worded Pull it. Pull it up. Very specifically. Okay. okay. Superman Returns is two hours and 35 minutes long because Lois Lane spends 20 minutes of that runtime getting her ass kicked by a door. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm not kidding. That door is more of a character in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The I, way when, she gets fucking smacked that, in the head by the door. That would have killed a normal person. When you said that, I died. I was just like, yep, I'm done. This is this is the review. We don't need film rescue. We just need that quote. <laughs> like that's, that's, true. that's the surefire way that you can tell that they didn't know what the fuck to do with Lois Lane in this movie. Which is which is crazy because speaking of things I've been watching, my adventures with Superman is some of mm. the most peak anime slash superhero content i've seen in a long time and they know exactly what the fuck to do with lois lane yeah. she is a uh, like whole ass three-dimensional character in that show it is crazy to me that people can't figure out what to do with this character she's such a perfect counterpart to superman yeah oh speaking no of, she speaking of which yeah, jack like, white is actually the voice of superman in that show isn't he yes yeah he is <laughs> from the boys <laughs> there you go <laughs> yeah no, but it, and any representation, like any animated representation of Lois Lane, has been amazing. If we talk about yeah. Superman, like the '90s one. If we talk about Justice League, we talk about Justice League Unlimited. We talk mm. about any any animated thing like that. She has been the most well-rounded, like sassy, very yeah. independent character. Like she knows her shit. She stands up for it. She's like, "Fuck you, bitch," you know. Um, honestly, I think one of the the best things ever was. Um, Bruce to get at Superman was like, I'm gonna steal your girl and fuck her in front of you. He like w- took Lois Lane out on a date, and then <laughs> and Clark was just like, This motherfucker. And she was like playing into it too. She's oh, like, yeah. Oh. She's like, Oh, yeah, I'm gonna get what I- I'm gonna get fucked. I'm gonna get wined and dined, and then I'm still gonna say fuck you too. Like, <laughs> it was just great. I love her. 
There was back when uh, the Batman and Superman TV shows were airing at the same time. They yeah, had yeah. a couple crossover episodes. <laughs> and mm-hmm. if I remember correctly, Superman and Batman figure out each other's identities pretty quickly. Yeah. They do. And, that, and that's why he takes her out on a date. Lois yeah. Lane yeah. figures out both of their identities within that story, though, doesn't yeah. she? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, like, like even the animated shows can do this better. The, uh, the movie even takes a second. Superman Returns takes a second to, like, acknowledge and lampshade the fact that it's weird that she had a kid. Also, this kid is definitely the product of some some weird going on, some Patty Jenkinsing in the background. <sighs> and then the movie lampshades it. Like, it talks about it. It goes... Wow, this is an odd thing for Lois Lane to do, isn't it? Yes, it is. Let's continue with the movie. I kind of wish Case was here because Case has a real big beef with this movie. I bet. I bet. I fucking hate this movie. (laughs) (laughs) I don't hate it as much as you do. It's 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 not awful, but it's really. I love. I okay. Let we're in the positives. Uh, Let's talk about what we like. Um. Positive is um, score. Great litter box reviews. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the score is good. You know the John Hotman score is good. It's just John Williams stuff, but yeah, it's good. The Brandon Ruth, I love him. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like if they, if there's one positive thing we can say about this, that this film gave us Brandon Ralph. He's incredibly well cast. Honestly, I, I was sad that he wasn't coming back for Man of Steel. I thought that would have. He like, did reprise this version of Superman in the Crisis of Infinite Earths crossover. Yeah, on yes, that, he did. That's his, this is his version of Superman from that, which they turned into the Kingdom Come Superman, where it's but like, he, yeah, yeah. He also returned to DC, but in um, like the Arrowverse. He's yeah, in Legends, the, um, Legends of Tomorrow. Is Legends Adam, of Adam. Tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. So like, it's not like they just completely got rid of him, which I think that's a better character for him, quite honestly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's more. He's much more charming and smarmy and snarky, making him this kind of stilted, dour version of Superman. Not, not the right direction. And then they doubled down with that with Man of Steel. They did it again. Yeah. Like, come on. I really hope James Gunn's version is Dude. so absolutely different. Cinema I, will I, never recover from Chris I, Nolan. We will never I, recover from Chris Nolan. Oh God. You know what? I, I forget his name, but the kid who played Jimmy Olsen in this movie, I Sam Hutchinson. Him. I agree. Sam, I think actually, I adore not, him. Not only is he great, but his whole the storyline of getting a good photo of Superman. Yeah, that mm-hmm. is one of my favorite beats because it leads to the best cinematography in the movie, where we get like putting the car down and we get, mm-hmm. you know, uh, holding the Daily Planet globe up and and we get all these like really, really iconic, desaturated as fuck, not particularly like well colored, but like really excellent like framings. And so I, I agree. This is at times an excellent looking movie. Yeah. At times not, but mm-hmm. at times it is. And, and I mentioned to Seth last night, um, you know who the cinematographer of this is? Um it's Newton Thomas Siegel. You know what other movie he shot that's considered one of the most beautiful movies ever made? Drive. Same yep. cinematographer. Oh. Why are these done by the same person? One is so brown and desaturated. The other well, one is neon colored that, all the way through. That doesn't come to filming. That's editing. Well, and and not only that, it's also he's, a, it's, he's worked with Brian Singer on every single Brian Singer movie. Yes. He's like he's his go to. Mm-hmm. So they're obviously pals. Not anymore. Is, not anymore. They don't what? work together anymore. <laughs> Let's get Back that out of the way. The Brian Singer should be in jail. Let's get this out of the way. He should be in jail. He has been accused of multiple accounts of child molestation, rape. Uh, there's been multiple accusations leveled against him. And uh, apparently he would have underage sex parties at his house with uh, another director of, that uh, has been on this show before, Roland Emmerich. Uh, they're, both these men are gay. They have underage sex parties. These are awful human has beings. Has not been physically on this show. We've yeah, yeah. yeah. We've his, mentioned his, him before, damn it. Let's his, his films straight, have been on this Jesse. show. His films have been on this show, but yes. Like, these are, let's, get, let's get that correct statement. These are terrible human beings, and it's amazing that they made it as far as they did. Uh, Singer has not done anything since he shot Bohemian Rhapsody, or at least half the movie until Dexter Fletcher was brought in to finish mm. the film. 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, and Roland Emmerich, I think he's still working. I don't know. I don't care. So yeah. Yeah. Anywho. Any hoozles. Um, Anyways, so yeah, Newton uh, Thomas Little doesn't work with him anymore. Thank God. Yeah, thank and God. and and he he brings great stuff to this movie. There there is definitely a like a good look to different sections. There's some um, good iconic shots. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and like, I don't even begrudge entire sequences in the movie like the the airplane sequence that's classic that's the kind of super oh, yeah. stuff i want i don't need him punching out bad guys the whole time i would like him punching bad guys sometimes though and this movie kind yeah. of shies way away from that this superman is like I, I, yeah nothing happens man. <laughs> this superman is i don't know where to put this superman you know I, mean, I mean, like it's supposed to be a pseudo sequel to the Donner films, uh, the first and second film. So it's a pseudo sequel, which well, timeline kind of wise why doesn't it work. Said returns, you know, yeah. they're implying yeah. more so than you know. Yeah, Superman returns back to Earth. Superman returns back to the big screen. It had been God years since Superman four came out. Right. So, um, but it also caused a problem story wise because. If it actually is a sequel to Superman 2, uh, not the Donner Cut. Donner Cut basically is its own thing. It ends in Superman 2 and it's done. Yeah. Um, whereas the original film, he's still flying around and five years goes by and apparently we get cell phones, flat screen TVs, modern cars, uh, right. you know, modern travel, space travel. That's just you know, it's just easily accessible at this point. Not even modern. It's not even modern space travel. That was like futuristic space travel. Yeah, futuristic. Well, Richard Branson shows up as a cameo. That was kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's cute. Yeah, one of the few, you know, rich people that I'm thinking is maybe a decent person, but probably has some shady shit in his past. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it, it causes problems story-wise because if this is a sequel and Superman gave up his powers in Superman 2 to have sex with Lois Lane so he wouldn't kill her and got her pregnant. And then he uses the super kiss to make her memory get wiped away at the end of the second movie. And this kid is actually his kid. Wouldn't she at one point say, hey, Superman, what did you rate me? Yeah. Also, the movie... Super Superman's a little bit of a creeper in this movie. It's a little creepy. Uh, uh, well, at that wouldn't point, he ever ask, though... like, hey... Superman, how do you know where I live? That's another lampshade they have in the movie, too, because she has an article called My Night with Superman where they, like, hint at the idea that she definitely had sex with him to, like, circumvent what you're talking mm -hmm. about here, but it's still, like... It's sleazy for a reporter to sleep with their interviewee, yeah. Yeah. so I don't respect her as a as a reporter anymore. Like, like take your pick. Did Superman do something awful, or did Lois Lane do something gross? Maybe a little bit of both. I don't know. Why, why do we have to be here? I mean, <laughs> the only thing I can say is that, like, obviously there's an attraction between the two. It, I wouldn't necessarily... You know, for all she knew, she could have consented and then one thrust gave her whiplash and have amnesia. <laughs> um, you know, just just saying. We need Wonder Woman's super uterus if we want to make a super child. Oh. I've, heard, I've heard this argument on the internet before. It's not one punch, man. It's one thrust, man. Jesus Christ. I mean, it makes Talk sense. Talk about a one pump chump. Like. <laughs> <laughs> he was a virgin until that point. Come on. <laughs> God damn. All right. Let's, uh, the, the fact that the movie hinges on this whole relationship is fucking weird and creepy and disturbing. And given the context of all the people involved in this movie, kind of makes sense. Because oh, I, yeah. I went into this being like, okay, they went into this with the best of intentions. Then I look at half the cast and crew and I'm like, yeah, half of you should be in jail. I'm like, you know what? Just the grossest people involved in this film. Leave Brandon alone. Uh, Brandon is the only one that comes out unscathed. Maybe Kate Bosworth as well, but everybody else. Everybody else. Franklin Jell. Kevin Spacey. Worked a lot since then. Sam. Sam Hutchinson. Sam Hutchinson. The baby. Okay. So, yeah. Well, his career, cool. like, what has he done since then? Uh, the Caveman so Show? He was... <laughs> Remember that? Well, he was, in be <laughs> he was in Being Human Show, which... Um, oh, yeah, that's right. He was... <laughs> He does a lot of voice acting. He was in yeah. Fanboys. Hmm. Okay, that's right. Um, 
I d- plot wise, we're talking about like like the weirdness of Superman and Lois's relationship because that is so much of the forward thrust of the plot of this movie. Um, it, al- it also a lot of the reason why it drags. What about this plot? Do we want to keep, if any, for our rescue? Are we doing a page one here, or are we like, is is uh, Lex Luthor's plan to make a new continent? Is is that? Oh my god! I- oh god! Fuck off with this landmass so- grab shit. They di- not only is it from the first movie, but also it makes no fucking sense. First off, I don't like this version of Lex Luthor. Yeah, I don't like him. Either. Lex Luthor is supposed to be like suave, very independent, headstrong, like self-assured. Like he it's, could it's be Gene the Hackman. worst. It's, he's continuing Gene Hackman's version. That's what it is. I don't know. I just. Was not a fan at yeah. all. Not uh, do, putting the actor who played him aside. Right. I still did yes. not like the character, how he was written. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, I, I, I'd like to remind the audience because it was a it was a rude awakening for me. I had not watched this since the theater. Uh, so rewatching this for the for the podcast, I forgot that this movie opens, implying that he's been fucking an old woman to get yes. her fortune. <laughs> Yes. Uh, uh, Why? The like, dentures in the cup had uh, me screaming. Like, I was just like, what mm. is happening? Because the same, I hadn't seen it since like, what, 08 or something. I was no. like, what is happening? What the fuck is happening? Like, come on. Starts on a bad, bad, bad note. Like this, I, that that's what I'm saying. That is not Lex Luthor and the no. whole whatsoever and the whole thing is shot like an episode of House like a, like a big reveal of Gregory House walking out of the it like well I mean the fact is Brian Singer was one of the executive producers on House and Newton Thomas Siegel actually shot a couple episodes so it makes sense doesn't makes it makes sense man makes sense uh, earlier you said you could relate uh, Terrifier to Superman Oh, yeah, so... I'm so curious for the payoff for Hope's Cup. They hammer the Jesus stuff into your head with this one. Really? I would say more than Zack Snyder's version. Agreed. Hold on. Okay. How is that related to Terrifier? Let me explain. So, the whole Jesus, him resurrecting and coming back to life thing, that started with the death of Superman story from the 90s when he died and was resurrected and there was, like, multiple versions of Superman. So Right. After that, like, there was a bunch of characters that died and got resurrected. So I'm like, does that mean that, like, anybody that dies in comics can be resurrected? Why does that make them Jesus? Here, here's a list of characters that have died and returned and are considered Jesus-like figures because they died and resurrected. Batman, Spider-Man, The Punisher, Hawkman, Green Arrow, Green Lantern, Galactus, Sailor Saturn, Jon Snow, Shang Tsung, Albert Wester, Jean Grey, Merlin the fucking Magician, Lucifer Morningstar, Zeus, Robocop, Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger, and Art the fucking Clown. (laughs) What the fuck is this guy considered Jesus? Shut the fuck up with this crap. I'm so sick of it. It's stupid, and it's ignorant, and it's annoying. He's an Art alien from another planet. He's not fucking Jesus. Art is my Jesus. <laughs> ah, damn it. Just he's, because he got he's... resurrected does not make him fucking Jesus. Oh, we gotta he's add... Jesus. We gotta add Deadpool to that list now. Uh, oh, Deadpool. yeah, Deadpool, yeah. yeah it just... Um... Okay, so I, I... I like what you're hinting at here, Jesse. I like what you're landing on, because there is... the is du- hinting or screaming? Well... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was being ironic. I got one more. I got one more to go. Uh, I, so, so there's the Donner Golden era of Superman, where I do get the Jesus aspect because he works miracles. You just said not five minutes ago that he gave Lois Lane a super kiss. That is actually in the comics. It is the, the, his powers from the seventies through the eighties. They kind of like would add a new thing. Like oh, he like works him. miracles. Like he literally no, works miracles. Like I get I, that comparison as we get I, into like the new era, and I think of like the Superman TV show starting this off and launching us into the like Zack Snyder era. That is like wrestler on, I got, Superman. Gotta like, say no. one thing. Because it's been my my uh, trend lately to piss Jesse off with Pokemon. Um, oh, no. There, 
So, so we can say Superman is the Pokemon Jinx because she is a an attack called Lovely Kiss that confuses a person and makes them forget. <laughs> Superman reading through his Pokemon deck being like, mm, I wonder if I have that power. <laughs> oh, let me buy this TM and use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i All think right. i think mission accomplished i did my pokemon piss off uh, effort. we're good <laughs> I, I think this superman returns is the last of that like the closest you can get to that jesus superman where he works miracles where his power set oh. is like I mean, he's he's literally affected by kryptonite to the point that he loses his powers, right? The movie shows yeah. us that. But also, because of his super will, is able to lift the continent made of kryptonite yeah. up out of the water. These are miracles. He's working miracles. Yeah. I, well, that's more of like a Moses thing but than a... It is! It is! Thing. Literally, like, the, the parents send the kid down the river to go to another civilization. It's It's Moses. It's not Jesus. I think this is the last temptation of Christ. That's what the point that I'm trying to land on. I think this is Brian Singer, and I'm not kidding, trying to do, I'm not kidding, Martin Scorsese's The Last Temptation of Christ, the one where he actually oh fucks. The, it, the fact that you combine those two names, Martin Scorsese and Brian Singer in the same sentence, makes me want to fly over to, to Washington State right now and punch you. <laughs> I'm not saying he achieved it. I'm saying that's what the movie's in stated intention goal feels to be with all the Jesus imagery and then also giving like a sexy subplot line to Lois Lane. And because she's like she's she would be known in a conservative conservative sense as like a harlot, right? Like she won't settle down. She works her own job. So the idea of like strapping her with a husband and a kid is to like conservify her. This is yeah. a highly conservative version of Superman. Oh yeah, With, oh, like also, thousand percent. It has this kind of Norman Rockwell nineteen fifties Americana vibe to it, which, dude, by two thousand six, it's outdated by this point, dude. Why do they go back to this? What? 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 This is completely outdated. Uh, it's it's a cool visual reference point, but the like ideas doesn't function it. in 2006 yeah. yeah the idea and you even mentioned like they show the war in iraq in in this movie yeah they show <laughs> war, iraq war footage i'm like this is not the right place for this superman saving yeah. a, a space shuttle or like actually launching a space shuttle was very like reactionary to the columbia uh disaster yeah. and so like america needs to see a shuttle get into space successfully so they can heal and it's going to be superman that makes it happen and and like i i you you rant against the Ayn Randiness of Man of Steel. I feel like this is very Ayn Rand, like just on a platter, like un unabashedly. This is Atlas Shrugged. Yeah, this this feels well. Also, like the visual of him holding the planet, the Daily Planet globe. It's it's Atlas. It's great shot. Atlas. Yeah, great, great shot. shot. Great image. But does it? I think it's unintentional Ayn Randianism. Snyder did it with intention, whereas with this, like, it's not as intended. I think, yeah. I think Snyder did it loudly, and this is trying to, like, hide it behind yeah. patriotism Americana. Like, I, I'm just I mean, shocked. The, by this point, we're in the middle of the Iraq War, and the Afghanistan War is kicking up. Like, it, like at this point, it's like you had to be pro-Americana. If you weren't, you're oh, considered yeah. a, a dissenter. Like, now, we look back and we're like, wow, we all should have been dissenting. <laughs> What a terrible country we were back then. And still are, unfortunately. Always have been. <laughs> Always have been! <laughs> God damn it. Um, so, okay. About so, that, moving to Norway. So then, uh, I guess let's let's talk restraints on our pitch then. Are, do we want to follow the, the core idea here of, like, cap ending the Donner era? Is that what we want to write? Or are we, like... La like Superman returns to launch a new thing. Like this is, I I'm thinking like the Mad Max two of Superman movies. Like we just try to run uh, away with it. If I could make a weird pitch here, <laughs> if you're going to say like Superman returns back to earth and like, Oh, Lex just happens to get out of prison at just the same time. Uh, that's kind of dumb. <laughs> like <laughs> That's kind of stupid. It's a way to get around that. There's a storyline in DC Comics where Lex Luthor became president. What if he's oh, the president? Yeah. 
Yeah. Upon Superman's Super- return, Lex is and already. Superman president. has to be subservient to him. Wow. How much would that hurt? Just to get back and realize, oh God, the guy I, I, that hates me the most and the guy I fought against the most is now my boss. Yeah. See, if if we're gonna do like cuck Superman, I almost want to keep the idea that Lois Lane and him have a kid now to also like double like, down pacify him, right? It's like also you can't be yeah. Superman all the time. You have a fucking kid and responsibility back here on what Earth. If, what if Lois married Lex Luthor? There's a storyline where that happens in the comics. I, I think that's a little too much. We're combining too many things at this point. Ew, I'm, trying, I'm, trying, I'm trying to go so far away from this fucking movie, and I right, just want to get right. away from it. Well, okay. I, I get what you're saying, but you're also grabbing at like three different storylines, is okay, what I'm right. saying. I, I'm for the Lex Luthor is president thing. Lex is, Lex okay. is president, and, very and, fitting. And by the way, right now, we have a, a convicted felon currently running for the presidency. <sighs> If he wins, there you go. There's your Lex Luthor. Oh, maybe, maybe that's our plot. Maybe he ran for president from prison. There you go. And is Trump his VP? Yeah. Well, me- uh, just just sure. to make the ideas. That's who bankrolled him instead of fucking a grandma. <laughs> that would make more. That would be less skeevy, honestly, than fucking an old lady. Tr- Trump is an Igor character, like a Donner era, <laughs> you know, like henchman. That really fits for a dumb guy like that. That really mm-hmm. fit. And he like tries to talk smart all the time, but he's not actually. Didn't his but IQ no. test? Didn't his IQ test recently leak out? And it's like seventy eight or something like that. That's that's the amount you you give to somebody that sits behind a cash register. Hey, so when I you get sit him so in this chair and teach him to count money. When you get so much bleach in your follicles and and <laughs> dye in your pores, you know it just uh, fucks you up, man. Yeah. So uh, I, the IQ thing, um, IQ does, uh, IQ measures our ability to take tests. Um, the- yeah, it doesn't actually mean how much you actually know. Anybody can learn anything. Like Alan Moore, one of the greatest writers of all time, dropped out of school. He yeah. is a dropout, but he taught himself, and his house is filled with books. He's an yeah. incredible yeah, knowledge. Like man. I, I don't have pieces of paper from a college, but I would say I'm a very intellectual person. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's there's there's a, as a great line in a great movie. Tucker and Dale versus evil. There's a difference between education and learning. Yeah. Yes. Education yeah, no. teaches you how to do something. Uh, whereas with uh, teaching is uh, teach- teaching you why you should do something. Yeah. Understanding the, how, the concept. The how and the why are two different things. Yeah. Like, like most education in America is like, just, just join the workforce. We don't care. We don't. Do oh, yeah. Can you repeat things back to me? That's- can, you, can you can you be can you uh, repeat things back like a uh, like a parakeet? If the answer is yes, then yes, you have a job. Damn, that's America. Uh, well, OK, so let's 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 run um, plot points that we don't like so we can avoid some pitfalls here. We, uh, we all rewatch this for the podcast. What was the mm-hmm. what was your buy out moment? Because I, 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 I want to promise the audience I walked into this ready to defend this movie knowing that that jesse was likely to be the and you can't on this and you can't i i don't have much to defend here i i'm grasping yeah. at straws it mm-hmm. a lot of this a lot of the push of the storytelling is emotional and so it's hard to unwrite that like yeah. when when the reasons that they, they bring out the the seaplane at the beginning of the movie is because the fiance is going to need it at the end of the movie because he's gung ho enough to just fly out to sea. Like also that's not how that works. You have to like log your flight. (laughs) You can't just uh, have a plane. (laughs) Anyways. My grandfather is like one of the greatest pilots of the nation. He's taught me how to fly and every bit of that. I was like, that's wrong. That's wrong. Yeah. That plane ain't going that far. That is a little tiny five seater seaplane. That ain't going that far. Yeah, right. Oh, and like, by the, by the way, with Lex's plan, not only is it dumb, you're going to kill off anybody that would be a, pers- a prospective buyer for your new continent. And by the way, your continent looks like absolute ass and nobody would want to live there. 
Yeah, it's it's like wildly uninhabitable. Like I love. There's I love no that. food. There's no trees. There's nothing. It's a rock. <laughs> Well, I guess he was. I guess he was just going for like. Well, if people want to take the moon, why not just a ra- random piece of land? Yeah, this planet Despic- is dumb. Despicable Me, I feel like has an, a better uh, villain plan. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's harsh, but probably accurate. <laughs> we get the shrink ray. We get it. <laughs> Put it out the moon, and then the poppy. Wait, but what? That, that shit works too. By the way, he does go through on that plan. Yeah, um, yeah I, I agree. I think like the it, the visual that we get for it is ugly. Like we're not. Yeah. I want to see old Krypton. I want them marveling at the at the architecture of it. Of a that was ancient... a deleted scene. It opened with him going to Krypton, and then they said, yeah. "Oh no, it doesn't work. We don't need it." Like, no, I want to see it. Well, I'm saying like I want to see the the like continent thing look like old Krypton, like oh, yeah. instead of it looking like a barren mass of like crystals, um, you know, like a, a an evil uh, where's where's his hideout in the Arctic? Um, the fortress of Solitude. Yeah, like an evil fortress of solitude. I wanted it no, to show like Superman no here. Yeah, mm. I wanna I wanted to show the like the majesty of like why planting the crystal is a good idea. Like, like ancient um, armories opening up and there's like Kryptonian technology that they can use to fight Superman. And, like, yeah. like really oh, up that. the ante at the end. I'm there. Sorry. Fuck all of that. Can we just say like, fuck Lois Lane, fuck Lex Luthor. I want to see his travels to Krypton. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Oh, by the way, the video game does that. If 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 this show had a uh, uh, Pee Wee's Playhouse buzzer, hip uh, hope just hit the buzzer. Yeah. Anytime, yeah. The, the video game has all the shit that was cut from the movie. Yeah. Anytime a movie pitches a better movie in the first five minutes and then skips it to uh. show you the rest of the movie. Boo! <laughs> the opening yeah. fight of that game, you get captured on the way back from Krypton back to Earth. And you get put in a, gl- a gladiatorial arena to fight other aliens for, was it, was it Mr. Mixie Pidilex? I think is what his name is. Yeah. A weird little squat alien guy. Yeah. Like, that's the, like, that's the opening of your movie. He's an international being, not an alien. I don't give a shit, clear. Seth. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, in the DC universe, there is a plethora of universal aliens like yeah. it's not like most things where like um like i'll, I'll mention x-men 97 um and x-men the animated yeah. series real quick like when they go out into space it's primarily just with the shiar empire and that is it yeah, yeah. you know but like with dc there's a th- within all the shows and comics they've gone to thousands of different places you know so they have they can literally just grab randomly and be like, boom, done. That's a story. Yeah. You know, yeah. there, there could have been a thousand different things. Even if they didn't do Apocalypse or if they didn't do Dark yeah. Side or, yeah. you know, there's so many different things they could have done. Because, dude, if he had a Superman Lobo crossover, <laughs> fuck, that would have been amazing. Th- this is before the time when they said they wanted to do a big universe. This is before this, b- I the know, MCU was what spurred DC to do mm, their. This mm. is my dreams, damn it. This I is get my it. dreams. <laughs> If you want more explanation of that, go back to watch that documentary, Death of Superman Lives. Kevin Smith is at one point going to possibly run a DC cinematic universe. I know. At one point, he was going to do it. And then he saw saw the responsibility of it and said, yeah, I can't do this. Mm. He was in his wake and bake era. He couldn't do it. Yeah, he was starting out as a filmmaker. He's like, yeah, I can't do this, guys. Because the executives were like, why are we always just using Batman and Superman? It's like, by the way, Gotham gets mentioned in this movie. That was kind of cute. Yeah. Um, I was like, that's cute. Like, oh, Superman dropped in to help out. It's like, okay, fine. Um, (laughs) But it doesn't really... It didn't really kick off until the MCU. So yeah. 
right. prior to this, and it was just Batman like, and I, Superman. I get that. that. Like, I, I get that. But if we're just throwing out ideas and the fact that he mentions Krypton, oh, my trip to Krypton, you know. Yeah. I like, want to see it. I want to see it. That's that's my, that's my dream, <laughs> you what know, if up? we're going to talk I, about I, it. I think I got the pitch. I think I got the pitch. Oh, God. Let's do it. it. Let's do it. Throw okay. it out. Uh, well, I, I want to – do we do we have any more hating to do on this movie? Because I'm, I'm feeling – Randy to t- oh, shit on anything we didn't like. No, t- oh, that, I, have a, I have a note. <laughs> I want Seth to have a Jesse moment. That's what I want. <laughs> I, I, I want uh, the suit looks like shit. Like the suit is so like the oh, cape is isn't plastic. red. It's like a plastic <laughs> piece on cloth. And the cape isn't red. It's brown. Can we go one step further and say first off? Brandon Routh is a very attractive man. He's fine. Yeah, yeah, he's I, fine. He's a very attractive man. I love him. He's adorable. Love him. Sweet person. If he's already that attractive, why is it in 90% of the movie, they CGI his face? Yeah, the, the, he complained about that after the movie was released. He said, why is most of my stuff in the movie CGI? Why is it a digital version of me? Like, he doesn't actually like, do a lot in this movie as Superman. He mostly just stands around. All yeah. the action is a CGI right. double. Yeah. Like, not not just that, but there's times where he's literally just standing there and they still CGI his face. And I'm yeah. like, his contact no lenses point. are really distracting. They are. The, the whole the whole fact is in that, like, you have a great looking guy. He's a great actor. Mm-hmm. He's a sweetheart. There's not too many scenes. It'd be one thing if it was like an action scene and like, like, okay, I get it. But like, there's literally times where he is just like standing. Yeah. yeah. And you CGI his face. I'm like, that's an insult. <clears throat> yeah. That is an insult, sir. You know what else they CGI'd? Uh, I heard about this from a friend of mine. <laughs> Apparently he has an enormous cock. They ah. digitally reduced it. That Hold makes on. sense. Can I, can I, can I just, okay. So since we're on the topic of Kevin Smith. And <laughs> Are you talking Brandon about Zachary make a porno? Attention, Monrovers. I'm a brand <laughs> state Randy. And I love it when you shove your dick in my mouth. <laughs> that was the reason why he actually got the job in that movie. Because he has a huge dick. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Don't I mean, congrats like to him. him. Good for you, man. Uh, he's an enormous guy. I mean, it just just proportionately. Like six, yeah, you know he's like I mean? six foot four. He's like he's really really tall. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Your mother, with all of her makeup and her alcohol, and just I will be your Sherpa. I will be your Sherpa up the mountain <laughs> of gayness. <laughs> oh god, I, I have a list of like other little like nailing things that just kind of. Oh yeah, no, I love nitpicks. I uh, pulling okay. out a nitpick can like pull a movie apart. <laughs> All right, serious question: Do banks even carry cash anymore? The bank robbery feels outdated and trite. With the Gatling no, gun, on the, like Superman's only been gone for five years. You guys don't know that you can't shoot him. Yeah, bro, like come on, man. <laughs> it's like uh, what? Uh, anyways, uh, no reason that Richard wouldn't know who Superman is. He's only been gone five years. Everybody knows who he is. That's like being, living in America and not knowing who Jesus is. Everyone's going to tell you what it is. Right. Uh, uh, dumb complaint. Does it make sense to have a billiards table on a boat? If you're rich enough, they don't give a shit. It, 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 it does make sense on a yacht. It does not make sense on the waters that they are on, for yeah. sure. Yes. You're, yeah. you're going to be in the Atlantic doing that. Also, another nitpick. How do they not seriously correlate? Oh, I'm Clark Kent. I'm mm. going on a trip. Oh, yes. I'm Superman. I'm going on a trip. I said the oh, same thing. <laughs> I am magically back from my trip and going to report. Oh, I'm Superman. I'm magically back and I'm going to save the day. It's the same oh. thing as Dark Knight Rises. Like, oh, Bruce Wayne and Batman disappear on the same day that's weird <laughs> what a and coincidence the, and, and the whole like scene where he bumps into lois and his glasses fall off and he's like look at me yeah look at me yeah. fuck it look at me <laughs> like and then he's like fuck she's not looking she puts his glasses back on like bro he should have just told her like dude just tell her dude Come right on. there's there's li- there's literally no reason not to tell her she she's the most capable woman like in the world 
Yeah. She she could. I'm know sure she mean? can handle that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Other the other thing. Uh, why does maybe, Lexi? Maybe it was just he's the only thing I can think of is. Oh shit. I have a lowly reporter salary. I don't want her coming after me for fucking child support. That's funny. Oh, fuck. God Earth damn. problems combined with alien problems. Superman's uh, life sucks. Oh, oh, great. Superman's fuck. a deadbeat dad. Great. His God child support gonna kill me. God damn it. All right, what else? Is I, guess I, got, I guess I actually have to fucking write some, some fucking stories. Right. Oh, what else no more is more American than a deadbeat dad? Jesus Christ. All right. So uh, why doesn't Lexi pick a pair of kryptonite brass knuckles on him at all times? Case everyone wants to throw down. Why don't they actually fight? Come on, man. Like, give him the Kryptonian armor. Give him a set of brass knuckles to beat the fuck out of him. Lex should do Brandon it himself. Brandon Routh didn't want Kevin Spacey touching him. Yeah. Le <laughs> Lex Luthor should do it. Cal Penn should beat the shit out of Superman. <laughs> Cal Penn should that, not be in this that, movie. <laughs> first off, I was mad at that because I'm like, Cal Penn is here and they, like, made him there. Yeah. Dude, okay. he, like, uh, uh, honest, honest feeling. Cal Penn would play a badass Lex Luthor, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I was like, "What the fuck?" I was like, "You give this great actor like nothing to do, like, literally nothing to do. Not even he has what two lines in the entire film, mm -hmm. and it's like, yes, sir, and yeah, I'll get that. Like those are his fucking lines, basically. This this and, movie does have one of my favorite payoffs for a joke around him, where he complains that the uh, instructions are in Russian, and then we see the 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 constructed thing later with all the Russian laid out on it. I was like, <laughs> that, that, okay, that's that's kind of a funny thing. Right, that's, that's yeah. Weird. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, like they give Cal Penn nothing to do with that. Like they could have made that a whole thing. Like the Russian guy in Armageddon uh, up in the space station where he's like, oh, yeah, English, Chinese, it's all in fucking Korean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Globalism. Jesus Christ. Uh, OK, so um, why do the crystals when they get chucked in the ocean affect weather? That I, I feel like I could. I could buy it if they give me like a Star Trekky, like oh, it's heating the water and that's causing the air to like the air above it to change. I, like did they I give could you anything like that at all? No, in the they, movie did, no, they did not. But I'm, then, 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 then your excuse is bullshit. <laughs> uh, fair, Your Honor. Uh, the, fair. Uh, <laughs> the mass uh, density of the crystals. Oh, quiet you. <laughs> <laughs> The movie's climax is boring. He throws a fucking rock into space. This is the end of our movie. This oh my it. god! It like return, it. it return to the kings us too. It like he sends the rock into space, and that's the last exciting thing to happen for fifteen minutes. Uh, that's the whole finale of our movie. Another thing: uh, doctors literally try to perform surgery on Superman. Can I even <laughs> process? The stupidity and ignorance of trying to do that. Yeah, I'm going to call that a so, donorism. That's a very, like... That's very... So there, that, like, you know actually, that... You know sunlight is the thing that gives him his power. So UV radiation, right? Get a bunch of UV lamps. They, put them they, around they, him. Put him like he's in a fucking incubator. And he's good. So that's not the only time they've done that. And, um... So there, there is a perfect example. I believe it was it was Justice League. The 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 Aquaman just suffered a bunch. He had his arm. He had his hand chopped off. This was like right before he got his hook hand. Mm -hmm. um, he was destroyed, and they uh, they were trying to give him IV fluids because they were like, okay, well he's a sea man. Let's give him fucking fluids. And they were like, nurse, why isn't he connected to fluids? And she takes a knife, uh, not a knife. She takes like a syringe and she goes, and it like snaps. And he's like, that's why. And it's like, it, it and it, then like five minutes later, someone, uh, I think it was like John Jones. And, he, and they're like, uh, put him in some fucking salt water, you fucking idiots. You know, <laughs> not just IV fluids, but salt water, you know. Um, so I, I think that's. 
more so a human normal reaction. If you look at any type of... If it, you're going to go for what you know first, your basic coding procedures, because mm. that's what it's supposed to be. That That is the only thing I'll give it, is like, the, we're going to re- resort to what we know. And if it doesn't work, then we're like, oh, fuck. It's like going to, it's like going to your doctor and then learning you have cancer. You're not going to go to your doctor for, for cancer. You go to an oncologist, you mm. know, so it, it's... That's the only thing I will defend because in that moment, they're not going to be like, send in a Superman specialist, Burr, you know. Fair enough. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. <clears throat> yeah. Right. And, and like Lois, it, <laughs> Lois Lane has a hard time getting into the hospital to even like give them that information because I don't know how disseminated that information on Superman would be at that point, too. Yeah. Exactly. Because he, he it's not like he's like advertising this shit either, you know. But What's you're right. As soon as she gets there, she should have been like UV light. Like, let's charge this man right, back up with exactly. the sun. Yeah. That, yeah, that should have been the specialist. Like, yeah. okay, guys. Like, here's his chart. You <laughs> know, like here's this article I wrote from five years ago that tells you literally everything you guys need to do. Let's just go ahead and reread this so you guys know what the fuck to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, speaking of Lois Lane, uh, so Superman is a deadbeat dad. And Lois moved on real quickly after he disappeared because, according to the time frame, she got together with Richard right after Superman left left the uh, fucking Earth because the kid is five years old. So she okay. dipped out of that relationship like that. Look, real quick. Maybe it started as there, there's a saying: the best way to get over a man is to get under another one. <laughs> so. So, therapy. Lay what's off that? Of her. What? <laughs> therapy. What's that? <laughs> like I said, look, I'm trying to push mental health out there. And it, back back in 05, it wasn't a thing. I'm trying to push it. I don't have enough beer for this. Jesus nope. Christ. <laughs> yeah, I ran out of my drink. Yeah. So. The last one. Fuck. But yeah, that's my thoughts. It, it's just, uh, this movie is a mess. Like, so how, what's your, how since this is the last it? episode, how, so, we, how are we going to fix it? So, well, real quick. I love it when you do this, Seth. Last episode, describe the plot of this movie. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that fucking shit. Last that episode, shit do you owe me one, man? <laughs> that shit eating grin, do it. <laughs> Do it. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Our film opens in a much better film that we remember. <laughs> uh, goes on to describe a much better film that I'm going to <laughs> after this. Uh, and then we get a pretty decent opening credit sequence, as per we should for a good Superman film. Very reminiscent of the Donner movies. We uh, cut to Martha Kent on Earth as Superman's comet arrives. Uh, He crashes to Earth, a broken man. And then we cut to Kevin Spacey's fucking an old woman for money. (laughs) I'm not kidding. That is the scene right next to that scene. Those two are buttressed together. It's so cringy. Uh, We discover that he uh, has gotten out of prison as we later find out because Superman didn't show up as a witness. That's not how that works at all. No! Um, <laughs> sorry, it's it's the United States versus Lex Luthor or the United States versus Brian Singer, uh, hopeful wishing, you know. Uh, that's no that's how our court system works, dumbass. Um, anyways, we, uh, we, we find... Our uh, Kevin Spacey Lex Luthor is come into a bunch of money through fucking this old woman. Uh, Superman now has to reacclimate himself into life on Earth, where we find out Lois Lane has gone and su- gone and got herself a man and a child. Uh, very against type for her, and as I mentioned, we lampshade that real hard by just saying that. Well, that's what she did. Um, we uh, acclimate Clark Kent back to the world and uh, question, do we even need a Superman? Superman returns. What for? That's what the movie wants to ask. 
Um, it's not long until we discover that Superman is needed in this world, though, because there's a space launch that is going poorly. All eyes are on televisions. We are getting reminiscent of 9-11 and the Donner cuts as well. Like, it's kind of both in there. It's uh, a little cool. It's a little everything. Yeah, a little bit yeah. of everything. Superman, Superman flies in to save the day and Lois Lane, of course, because she can't do nothing for herself. We got good old early 2000s misogyny running in here. Um, oh, 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 the good old days. Stars and pearls. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the good old days. Oh. So now we arrive at the major conflict for the film. Superman and Lois Lane don't get along with each other. I'm not kidding. I, That's the central conflict. Why? Why don't they get along? Well, they don't get along because Superman feels he's owed that pussy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> why are I on <laughs> And especially, uh, especially as we come to find out that uh, Superman also owes some child support in this situation. So <laughs> he's projecting. Um, <laughs> Lex Luthor at this point uh, reveals his plan by dunking some cool crystals Ugh. that he stole in a night out on the town. I think implying that he was keeping Superman busy so that he could do his heist. That's not text, but that's what I gathered. Um, we, we find out that he's gathered these crystals uh, from Krypton in an effort to recreate uh, Krypton on Earth and run that shit because that's what businessmen do. Uh, that pushes us through into our second act where all of our, you know, kind of Personal craziness has come to a crescendo. Superman and Lois Lane are not getting along at all. Lois Lane is not going to go to her. It wasn't a Nobel Prize, right? But it was Pulitzer. like Pulitzer. Pulitzer. Yeah, yeah. It's like super fucking important to not miss. Um, she, she decides that she's going to go off and investigate this uh, Lex Luthor mystery that C Clark Kent ends up getting assigned to anyways. So they're going to go to the same place. <laughs> Why are they not like dates or something like that? I don't um uh, seaplanes are involved you know we <laughs> <laughs> i love that random comment seaplanes are involved sure what's the uh, random ass shit you know so now now we've sent all of our characters out to sea but superman can't go yet as the continent is beginning to crack causing crazy earthquakes on the east coast which is frightening for east coasters we're not used to that shit um, but it only seems to affect Metropolis. It does, and it only seems to affect Metropolis through Rube Goldbergian inventions, like people throwing <laughs> cigarettes into the sewer, which is full of gas in Metropolis for some reason. Because apparently um, natural gas lines are directly under the street. Okay, I guess that's how that works. You know what it city? is? It's because Roland Emmerich, and we know why Roland Emmerich. Oh, fuck you, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Damn it, no. Oh, oh, oh. I, 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 have no. I offended you and your sensibilities? This movie looks just like 2012's oh, 2012. God. Damn it. Oh, oh, I hate no, it. Nothing. I hate Listen, it so much. Bitches be partying together. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> More than partying, bitches, apparently. <laughs> bitches be... That's the tagline. Bitches be partying together. So, so now we get into my favorite part of the movie which is Superman doing actual Superman shit and Lois Lane getting her ass kicked by a door. Door! <laughs> <laughs> For the next 20 unadulterated minutes, we get actually good Superman stuff and the worst Lois Lane shit I've ever seen in my life. Mm -hmm. um, I'm oh not going to lie, the, her and her son and the henchman playing the piano and her sending the facts, Cute. There's, a, there's a nugget of gold in there and I'll give you that. I'll give you Cute. that. Can you send uh, a fax from the sea when there's no Wi-Fi? It would it would have been a satellite fax, like on a ship like that that's being sent via satellite. Oh, okay. Yeah, makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it and I, because I, it was I, being I sent always to watching this, I was like, oh yeah, that's right, fax machines were a thing. Yeah. Why, why <laughs> is she never that? <laughs> Jeez. Well, and they call out a kid has a fucking <laughs> cell phone at the beginning. Why is she not texting? 
Um, yeah, why the fuck is she not texting? What the fuck? It goes to satellite anyway. I mean, it would solve it would solve problems for Superman too quickly. Oh um, god, damn, that keeps in you. <laughs> so uh, the results of Lex Luthor's plan uh, are coming to fruition. We see our continent growing under the water. Uh, it, it split the continent and sent Superman off. It's now risen up so high that it's lifting the boat up out of the water, giving us more Roland Emmerich style day after tomorrow <sighs> shit. Um, we Superman finally fixes things in Metropolis enough to come save the day. And we find out that kryptonite as it will weaken Superman to a point that he's unable to fight back and gets his ass kicked by cow pen. And this is our all is lost moment in the film. Um, the, the, they might drown in the boat if Superman can't get his shit together. Uh, but of course he does. He's able to fall off of a cliff and uh, get up back up into the sunlight and, and heal himself enough to finish the battle and lift a continent out of the ocean. Meanwhile, uh, Kitty no for well, yeah, for for his iron will and nothing else. For you reasons. believe in yourself. You can do it. it, okay. it a uh, little minor nitpick in the comics, Superman had to learn how to hold his breath long enough to fly in space. In this movie, yeah. it just forgoes that entirely and says, Superman just held his breath and you better fucking believe me. Um, <laughs> that's kind of the end here. You better fucking believe me that he lifts a continent sized kryptonite piece out of the ocean. Cause Jesus. Cause, Cause Jesus. he's Jesus. He's Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Zack Snyder. Um, I love you this much. <laughs> I wish I was watching Man of Steel uh, like often times during this movie. That's, you know that that's uh, that is the fucked up thing. I was watching. I was kind of like I would rather watch Man of Steel because yeah. at least shit fucking happens. And then Return of the Kings uh, returns to theaters at the end of Superman here, and we get fifteen minutes of just slow mo. E emote bait i guess they thought they were gonna go for the oscar on this one uh yes it's ass is what it is <laughs> it's not good yeah. and then we get probably the cringiest scene of the movie that we didn't talk about at all during this review superman breaking into lois lane's home oh god <laughs> to, to speak jesus prophecy over a son that yeah. he has not introduced himself to as his father yet yes Creepy! For reasons. Because hovering over little boy's bed is a normal thing to do, Brian Singer. That's a normal fucking thing to do. Oh, There's no reason movie. he couldn't have just floated outside the window and we could have zoomed in with his supervision, which is a power he has, and done the scene that way. Maybe a little voyeuristic, but, but not creepy as fuck. That's trespassing, sir. That's the multiple... Anyways, hey, every, hey, every, look, every, he has every he has every right to with because he doesn't pay child support. Every negative thing I said about Man of Steel, I take it back. <laughs> <laughs> every the episode, I'm not even gonna pitch. That's fucking, enough pitch. <laughs> fucking thing. The film wow. rescue for Superman Returns is Man of Steel. <laughs> Done. Close the books. Oh, we God. got it, folks. Damn it, I hate this movie. I think you two landed on much better pitches, and I know how to combine them, and I know how to combine them in a way that doesn't start a new cinematic universe, but would make sense for the time. We haven't even really done a pitch. I just said, hey, Lex Luthor could be president. That's all I said. And, <laughs> and hope, I said and hope Krypton. Hope said, we got to see the Krypton shit. Okay. Yeah. Here's my pitch. Okay. Let's do it. We walk into the studio and we say, we want to make the next Superman movie. It's called Superman Returns. We want to bring home the Richard Donner era into this new era of superhero movies. We see the Richard Donner era as being Superman 1 and 2. Part 1, part 2, perfect. Deuces, you're Done. out. We want to copy that. We just want to do that again. So let's do Superman Returns Part 1, Superman Returns Part 2. Here's the pitch. Superman Return Part 1 is going to be a proto 
Guardians of the Galaxy type movie with Superman arriving to Krypton uh, at the beginning. We see, you know, okay. his journey through space. Maybe maybe we start on like the reason he's leaving. He's not leaving Lois high and dry. This is a very important mission to him. He's the first man. Like he's an astronaut, right? That's yeah. the feeling we want for the beginning here. <clears throat> He's mm-hmm. he's been training for months to be able to control his breath so that he does he went a whole year without breathing. That that's how we're opening this movie. Like he he's he's trained himself to that point because he's Superman. So now he's like, I'm gonna go back to Krypton. The astronomers think they've figured out that it, that there's like remnants there. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna see what's up. He we, that's our opening. He flies all the way to Krypton. In the remains of Krypton, a evil. Kryptonian scientist has set up shop and he's been working on an experiment. And this experiment is an experiment in evolution where he's taking a creature and he's putting it out into the harsh uh, Kryptonian like uh, environment. Uh, The planet's like separated apart and it's dead, but the creatures are still alive on it. There's no people. It's a super hostile environment. And he's been sending this, this alien into this environment. And every time it dies, he goes in and he collects its DNA and he makes so, another one. So a tardigrade. Uh, we could start with the tardigrade, <laughs> sure. Uh, but like at the- Is this at the, the point, origin of Doomsday? At, at the point that we're meeting him, he's got a brutish, big gray hulking alien, right? Nice, it's Doomsday. <laughs> Superman arrives to his home world uh, and interacts with the AI system that pours itself into that liquid Kryptonian tech. There's a little bit of that left and he pours it into a body and the body gets three marks on its front. It's Brainiac. Brainiac. Brainiac (laughs) As a good guy. Okay. There are good brainiacs. Yeah, there's other dimensions. This is for this is proto brainiac. So this is okay. this is uh, Kryptonian AI. Uh, it can take the form of his father, but it chooses not to uh, because he's already communed with his father. So he's like, I'm just gonna kind of, I'm gonna support you, uh, trying to figure out like what kept Krypton from blowing apart. Turns out it's this mad scientist, and this is where we get the first fight of the movie. And when I tell you, Superman gets his ass kicked. I am telling you, Superman gets thrown into another solar system. <laughs> this well, yeah, alien, because there's no yellow sun in Krypton. He, this alien's not <laughs> to be with, and we prove that quick. He, as he crash lands into this other solar system, he, uh, we find out that he's crash landed on the Hawk planet, where Hawk Girl, uh, I forget the name of the planet. Uh, offhand because I'm not looking at my notes. Hawkman and Hawk Girl are who he runs into on their home yeah. planet. Uh, Than- Thanagar. Thanagar. There you go. Thanagar. Thank you. Thanagar. Um, so he's crashed onto Thanagar. Uh, they kind of like uh, let him know like Thanagar is not doing super well. We're under this oppressive regime right now. It's the White Martians um, and they're like trying to enslave our people and we're trying to fight back. Uh, we have a yellow sun, so like Superman's recharging at this point, uh, and they're like, "We just we need your help, and we're brave enough to like like help you if you can be Superman for our world." And he's like, "My powers aren't fully back. I don't know if I can do this. We're gonna need a team." So they start to put together a team of like uh, alien interlopers. They run into Lobo, and Lobo joins the team here's, for a price. Here's okay. my man, my That's man Lobo. The, the, the most disparate people you could possibly put together. They they run into he's got Brainiac with him he's got Hawk Girl and Hawkman they run into Lobo they run into Martian Manhunter who's on the run away from Mars oh, uh, he's yeah, he, yeah. he's a man like he's a he's a general on his planet but now he's essentially a, a street thief in in space they bring him onto the team and then they find a Green Lantern in the middle of the movie and they get him to join I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we do like an OG Green Lantern. Maybe we do an alien Green Lantern. Maybe we like Kilowog. Kilowog. Yeah, Hell Kilowog. yeah. Justice for my boy alien. Kilowog. Need yeah, yeah, yeah. Weird alien, yeah. So now we've got yeah. our seven samurai together. Oh, you motherfucker. You're so doing Zacksider shit better than he ever did. You son so this, of a bitch. this is plot A. Plot B on Earth, Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen are trying to figure out uh, how. Lex Luthor is running his presidency campaign from prison. 
They, they're sure it cannot be legit. There's no way this is legit. They're absolutely sure. They're investigating. They're investigating. But across the movie, he wins the presidency at the end of the film as Superman and his seven samurai. Just to just to like quick pitch through this because I don't want to spend too much time. Uh, his Superman and his seven samurai, our new Justice League, uh, are uh, like beating white Martians and finally uh, proto doomsday in space. That's the end of part one. They, they get their like their little win uh, while Lex Luthor's getting a big win on Earth. We get to yeah. like intercut, you know, they're celebrating in space with like the Earth patriotism celebrating. It's, it's a it's a fun uh, exit. Part two is Superman's return to Earth, finds out Lex Luthor's the president and now he's got to be like kind of subservient to him. He's like, damn, I put together this Justice League in outer space and like. I, I kind of miss like doing all that stuff. I don't even know if I want this like earth life anymore. Um, Lex Luthor's like got, I, I'm trying to figure out like it, what his plan would be. If we don't do like starting a new continent, maybe he's like trying to build a new planet or something. Maybe he's got a way to like, Oh um, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. So he wins the presidency in order to kickstart Vandal Savage's regime. Ooh, what was his? Re- what would his re- regime be? <laughs> I don't know anything about Vandal, Vandal Savage outside of Legends of Tomorrow. Uh, Vandal Savage, basically. So he is a character who he literally was a caveman, had radioactive from a meteor, and he lives forever. Like he cannot die; he lives forever. And because he literally has the knowledge of the beginning of mankind. And he just like wants to rule everything. Mm. He's he's kind of like the smartest man on the fucking planet, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he wants to like not be president, but like be ruler of Earth and then ruler of galaxy. So like basically, he to get his foot in the door, he's using Lex Luthor as like a puppet. Lex Luthor thinks Ooh. this is he's oh, okay. using Lex Luthor as a puppet, and like and because Vandal Savage being from the beginning of time basically has all this wealth and power and he's like i can use lex i will bankroll this fucker and have him be my foot in the door i like that i also i love i love that like we've we've done superman's brute strength in part one and then we have to go against a mind in part two um i'm trying i i like that a lot so so like that's uh payoff to then Lois Lane and Jimmy's arc from part one is like they figure out the Vandal Savage <laughs> link. Uh as and they're and he's gonna silence them and then that's when Superman comes he's like fuck I gotta save these right because because Van- super yeah Superman's well, they, basically or they expose the truth and it's like nobody cares because a lot of people this his popu Lex Luthor's popularity has gone up because yeah. he, because of like current political climates, <laughs> I uh, also hope. I love that you're basically pitching like Trump and Putin. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you prefer? <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah. There's like a dumb puppet in the White House that we're like, how the yeah. fuck did he even get there? And then there's yeah. actually like, oh a, yeah, there's a that guy mind behind it. Um, yep. I love that. That's excellent. Give me what the times, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's perfect. Um, yeah. So, so essentially, like part two, we see Superman in the Homelander position, but mirrored where it's like, I'm a good guy that has to do bad things because of who the president is. And then like, he's got his, you know, like justice league. Uh, I'm I'm thinking like hot girl comes back to earth with him. Uh, Brainiac comes back to earth with him. John Jones, obviously. Uh, Martian Manhunter comes back to earth. Lobo would fuck off. Like I'm, I'm imagining he wouldn't be in the second movie. Even he like, dies i know he can't actually but you know we get give him like a like a fake yeah. out character death in a the different first green lantern shows up maybe you have like a hal jordan cameo or something oh like yeah yeah okay let's do J- Zack snyder even better than him in our part two as well hell yeah jesse hey let's uh, actually do the real shit they should have done the shows up, does shit in our movie how about that <laughs> zach <laughs> Um, yeah, no. that's the part one, part two. You do a seven samurai in space with Superman as our uh, setup, and then the payoff is you know your your. I got it. I got it. First first movie is seven samurai. The second movie is forty seven Ronin. Yeah. Okay. We yeah, gotta yeah, just kill yeah. him. We don't have a choice, but we just gotta kill him. 
That's right. And this forces Superman into a position where he has to like choose about killing and we can actually comment on that instead of making it like mm-hmm. kill General Zod, your uncle, or else. Right. Or else what? Or else he'll kill those right. citizens, of course. The ones we've just been introduced to. <laughs> They're so important. They're so important. Yeah. So. That's the pitch. Look at that. Hour and a half in, 90 minute Superman movie on Look both ends. Look at that. Look at that. And no creepiness, no weirdness, no no grossness, all gone. Yeah, uh, Brandon Routh can stay. Cal Penn is our Lex Luthor, like straight up. Yes. I, mm-hmm. I Especially especially Agreed. if we could like satirize the um, Obama I mean, era a little was bit. This a, was this around the time that Breaking Bad was starting up? Uh, you, know 2000... gonna, you know I'm going to say it. You know I'm going to say it. Brian Cranston he... is Lex Luthor. I, I don't hate it. Uh, honestly, I don't. I think, I think he got he, annoyed by that. He said, yeah, that's lazy. Like calling me Lex. Luthor. Like, come on. It's, it's well, too perfect. dude. He, the thing is, it's so close to the Donner era. It's so close to Gene Hackman that like my gut reaction is like, if you're going to do new era, Lex Luthor, spin it into something else and mi- like going with Cal Penn since yeah. he's already here. And I like, like we know would crush that. Yeah. It's just the easy Superman returns in. In general, I'd love to see. Or Brian if Cranston. you want, if if you want Brian Cranston, have him be Vandal Savage. Oh, there you go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Done. Wait a second. Okay. There you go. There you go. I'm yeah. the man from Earth. You're the man from the stars, dude. Mm-hmm. I can fucking see that shit. Done. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. Have you ever seen the movie The Man from Earth? Uh, is that a lost reference here? It's no, like no, no, yeah, you're, The Man I, Who I, Fell I, to Earth? No, no, no. There's there's a there's an indie movie. It's like eight actors in one room and the the plot is one of the characters is describing that he's basically Victor Savage, not in name, he, but he's like I was a caveman and then I like saw the rise and fall of different empires. And like, they imply he might've been Jesus. And now oh. he's like alive in modern times. It's, it's the Vandal Savage story, but like mm-hmm. condensed into like a little indie movie. Um, yeah. It was written by Jerome Bixby, who conceived the screenplay in the early 1960s and completed it on his deathbed in April, 1998. Wow. Okay. That's fucked. And Jesus the movie's Christ. like, the movie's depthful. Like it's it's the kind of story that I would love to see retold. And doing it with Superman's excellent. And doing it with Brian Cranston being the man from Earth. You know what I mean? Like he he's lived through every era of man. Mm-hmm. He he's the like he is the man. Like like he is him. Damn yeah, man, this also looks really interesting. <laughs> it's good, uh, Jesse. I think you'd like it a lot. It's a very like um like just kind of intellectual, just like talking out the ideas kind of movie. Yeah. Like nothing philosophical. N- nothing happens. They, they yeah. sit in the room, they talk to each other and then they leave. And that's the whole movie. Oh, okay. Apparently as John Billingsley, who was in Star Trek. Uh, that makes me happy. Dude. He has a fucking meltdown in that movie too. It's good. <laughs> Um, thank you. you. You guys, you guys came with the great, uh, pitches. I just sprinkled in some, some film rescue history. I feel like we've done seven Samurai like three times. <laughs> It's so easy point. to do. It's so easy can, to do. Why can't you get it right, you Zach? Why can't you get it right, Zach? As long as you twist it, it's it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Well, no one's going to complain about getting a, a green... If not Martian Manhunter, I also could see working um, Kara Zor-El or Supergirl into this story. Ooh, yeah. She could easily oh, yeah, swap yeah. in and come back to Earth with Superman, which yeah. would be a great, like, hey, I went to space and found another Kryptonian and brought her back with me and found it's this Kryptonian funny. android and brought him back with me. Like, uh, he built his little oh, Superman. Oh, I got it. I got it. So she's sent to Earth also, like, right after uh, Superman, but because she went through the wrong wormhole, so she's been kind of, like, going through wormholes all over space. But due to time dilation, when they meet up, He's like, yeah, Krypton was destroyed like like ten years ago. She's like, what? It was yesterday. Whoa, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. That would fuck her up so bad. <laughs> <laughs> they like, just it did- was just yesterday. No, no, ten years have gone by. They just did that in that uh, that Monarch Godzilla TV show. That's the yes. They they did a I very similar thing show. where like I love that show. <laughs> one of the characters is like, oh, you're here to save me, and they're like, yeah, but we're saving you from. 2010 and she's like what the fuck <laughs> it was 1960 when i went in oh god jesus christ yeah, yeah. 
Hell yeah. Do more, what a, do more weird time shit with these characters, man. Yes. Awesome. Superman is perfect for like weird sci-fi trippy There's ideas. A, Invincible stuff. did that. Invincible did that thing where uh, the dad gets captured and he's like, I was in prison for about 20 years on an alien planet. Can you please pass the potatoes? <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think that's in the first season, as far as I remember. It's like the dad gets captured, and he's like... I think it may have been cut from the show, but it's in the comics. Where, like, he's captured by, like, an alien race and in prison for, like, seven or ten... Or something like years. Omni-Man? Just, yes, Omni-Man. He gets captured, and he's just like, yeah, where's dad? I don't know where he's been. And uh, no one knows where the where Omni-Man's been. And he just, like, zips into frame, and he's, like, sitting at the table. He's like, yeah, I was captured by an alien race, and I've been tortured endlessly for days and days on end. Can you please pass the potatoes? That's funny. Yeah, I think they did. that was in the comics, but I don't think they put that in the show. Yeah, I don't no, think it's in the yeah. show. They, 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 as much as it's in the show from the comics, they cut a lot. They oh, yeah. Lot. Yeah. You have to. Very streamlined in the show. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's going to be a – good as places any to wrap it up we got yeah. jesse to admit that he takes back everything he said about man of steel i admit <laughs> i meant Let's it facetiously rescind that before the end it of the episode said, we have proof <laughs> yeah I, I i is this the worst superman movie i mean superman 4 exists oh okay here's the thing superman 4 is so bad it's good like okay. And and it's unintentionally that way. I don't think this movie has way too much intentionality around it to be this bad. Superman four is like goofy, like WWE shit that I'm here for. Like it, yeah. it's not super well presented. It's probably like the worst made of the Superman films. But uh, this feels intentionally creepy and disturbing. Yeah. And this feels it. like it really reflects the the kinds mm-hmm. of people that made it. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. So I wish you well about Zack Snyder directing. At least he's not an awful person. So. So. He can be based sometimes. <laughs> I believe in all humans' ability to be based, and that's what yeah. makes me like Superman. I think I that's going to believe that. I don't believe that about Brian Singer, though. <laughs> uh, so James Gunn, Superman. Are we hopeful? Yes. Oh, it's going to kick ass. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. It's still, I, it, it, it just, it, it just annoys me whenever I see like all the Snyder bros just will not shut the fuck up. Just well, miss. they, they also it's like, getting, it's getting beyond irritating. Like there, there's two people that currently exist that have been illustrated as looking like Jesus in modern day, Donald Trump and Zack Snyder. That's I have literally seen creepy, fucked up, weird photos, photoshopped. Both of them looking like Jesus. Yeah. I I think that Why we, are these two people in the this, same place? This is my Jesus. Yes. Yes, yes <laughs> Terrifier. Art the Clown. Why are these Art two the people clown. have like cults surrounding? Them? No, it's it's literally new religion. Like the reason they hate James Gunn is because he worked for Marvel and Marvel is woke. Like it's a brain worm. All, like you can he also see the tape worm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, he also but worked for trauma. As far as his Superman goes, I think if I had any doubts, Peacemaker and Suicide Squad, that pairing, sorry, oh, he's yeah. going to crush Superman. He's going to crush Superman so fucking hard. Like that is going to be such a great uh it's going to make you feel like Superman is alive again. Like yeah. I, I I really truly feel that that cuz that he's making that change with like characters like peacemaker peacemaker on paper you should not like this guy like you shouldn't and yeah Yeah. he knows if i throw john cena in this role and if i give him these kinds of arcs and this kind of writing i I love peacemaker like how could you not do that with superman yeah yeah i i'm all faith in the man to do it well yeah neil gaiman said years ago like executives at DC and executives at Warner Bros. were like, we don't know how to make Superman relevant. Neil Gaiman was like, you don't have to make him relevant. Just make him inspiring. There's a difference. Right. Yeah. Henry Cavill Superman, while I like him as a person, that did not inspire shit. That was yeah. not inspiring. You didn't feel inspired right. to throw logs through people's trucks after <laughs> watching? I didn't feel inspired to be mopey and miserable when I walk into Congress to claim responsibility for my actions destroying a city. <laughs> On that note. Anyway. (laughs) 
I think that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you both so much for being here and, and slogging uh, through this uh, Superman slop with me. Yeah. Oh, last episode. Thank God. Uh, End of an era, folks. (laughs) Check out our uh, Patreon for early access to our content. Uh, If you're watching this on YouTube, give us a subscribe down below. Um, You can also follow. Like, subscribe, comment. That's right. We love the comments. We can we can chat with you in the comments. Uh, We're also on social media on TikTok and YouTube Shorts and Instagram. All of that's under our link tree. Uh, You can check all of that down below. Thank you both so much for being here. Thank you for hosting uh, Film Rescue through to the to this uh, super finale. At least it's a good uh, pitch. Bad movie, good pitch. I love that pairing. There you Rescue. go. Yes, there yes. you go. I think that's been it for for this show, for the Pitchmaster General, and for Film Rescue. Good night.